Facebook, YouTube, whatever. The black screen here is our buddy Chris. It's the uh, best I've ever looked. It really, it really is. Like I, I don't know what Boston did to you, but uh, but Boston made you look better. <laughs> All right, so, uh, of course, as always, it is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier gambling, uh, sports gambling destination, well, and gambling, whatever. Um, but, yeah, lots of sports books down there. They've got six of them. Go check them out. Fantastic. Chris, let's jump right in. Are you, uh, are you ready to talk about your Tigers? Yeah, man. LSU 22, Auburn 21. I was, pick, huh? how about, I was how about dead Koto wrong. over Tom Herman? I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that. <laughs> hey, Tom Herman had a pretty good weekend. Whatever. We'll get into he, him. He beat up on a garbage team from the Pac-12. We beat up on two <laughs> top ten teams. The only school in the country has got two top ten wins. Yeah. So yeah, Joe Burrow. Like, Joe Burrow looks like he's uh, looks like he's all right. And, like, the numbers still aren't fantastic, 15 out of 34, but uh, – 249 yards and a touchdown and in some major, major drives in the fourth quarter. Uh, LSU's defense held Auburn at 328 total yards, picked off Jarrett Stidham twice. Uh, LSU held the ball for 35 minutes in this ball game. It Old was, school football. Yeah, it was pretty much domination. So it's, Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. I like this team. The more I've watched them, uh, they're, they're young. They're going to make mistakes. Um you know, I'm, I'm enjoying this one right now, but I, you know, I, I don't know that this is a team that can win the SEC. I don't know that they can beat Bama. I don't know that they can compete with Georgia. We still have to play both of them in the regular season. But you um, get them at home. Yeah, but I don't, God, I don't know that it matters. I'm going to enjoy this one. I'm not <laughs> going to worry about it. Uh, they, they did look great. Coach O is making all the right moves. He looks like a different person. Well, I, I had them at one and two at this point, and right now they're the only team in the country that has two road neutral site uh, top ten wins. As a matter have, of fact, like we there's have two multiple top ten wins, and we didn't play either one of them at home. Yeah, and and to go beyond that, uh, I think there's like only one. I think maybe the SEC is the only Power Five conference that uh, that actually has that like total. And LSU's got it by themselves. No, we're so, yeah, we're the only team in the country. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's bananas. Uh, you know what it reminds me of though, and like I don't know if you'll agree with this or not. This this looks a lot like in like a Les Miles team, doesn't it? It it, it really does. Um, Orgeron, these kids want to play for him. He he's a he's a super excitable guy. Uh, I I. I I'm getting a little frustrated and tired of the, uh, you know, the way he talks jokes now. Like, that bit's been going on since he was at Ole Miss, you know? Like, this – Oh, yeah. At some point in time, this, this, is, this is who he is. This is what he sounds like. And, yeah. And it's 2018, and let's get over that. You know, the, the, the sports writer asking, you know, do you need a translator to communicate with him? Go, come on. Get off my lawn with that crap. <laughs> Look, it uh, will continue on until he is no longer coaching. Well, it's because, because it nobody's is, creative. Nobody knows how to, no. to make a joke about somebody that's not the cheesiest, simplest thing to, to say. Well, I think the biggest thing is there are still casual fans out there that don't know who he is, right? So when they I run across it. That. I just disagree. I don't think there's a single college football fan that does not know after the decade and a half of him being involved in college football that he is a thing – this is what he looks like, this is what he sounds like, and this is what he acts like. Everybody knows him. You might be right. You might be right. So He might that, be that's... the most recognizable face in college football. You know, you might be right about that. With, with the YouTube song and whatnot that went, uh, that went so yeah. viral. While uh, he was that old Miss and all this stuff. Yeah. What he did at USC. We're talking about big programs. He took over USC for that interim time. That's not some slouch. No, you're right. You're right. So West Coast and East Coast all know about him. Yeah, he may be the uh, the most recognizable face. Yeah. So I'd love to have a study done on that. That'd be fantastic. Well, he's fantastic. Like Dabo and Saban, if you put them in a room full of fifty other people, they just blend in. They just yeah, look like nobody knows. Dude, he he's gonna stand out. Oh, you got that right. 
So I don't know who the other one might be. Maybe Urban Meyer. Maybe. Well, that's just for negative purposes right now, today. Yeah. Somebody so, with distinctive facial features. Well, it'd be all O. It's all Coach O right now. Orgeron, uh, it surprised me. He, like, he's got this thing rolling right now. He he they believes in good. himself, and yeah, they looked really, really good. It's going to be a very interesting uh, late October, early November for them because they they got Georgia, Mississippi State, and Alabama all coming up. Well, still have Florida. Yeah, and Florida on the road. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's that's that's coming up very soon. Very, this very is, soon. This is going to be the hardest schedule in the country. I mean, Auburn and LSU are going to play the hardest schedules in the country. Yeah, I do agree with that. Uh, let's move on from there about, uh, you know, hardest schedules and, and whatnot. Uh, these weren't necessarily hard schedules, but who is more disappointing right now, Willie Taggart or Chip Kelly? Oh, Willie so, Taggart by far. Yeah, it, it is a complete disaster. Florida State, one and two, their only win is over Samford, and, and that was a, a train wreck of a game anyway. Uh, they look terrible after a 30-7 to beatdown at Syracuse. UCLA uh, gets blown out at home by Fresno State, 38-14. to uh, After looking like they had a little bit of life at Oklahoma the week before. The, the difference in those two schools is, is Mora left nothing at UCLA. There is no talent whatsoever. Florida State still has four and five stars across the board all over the field. They're just not good at football. Yeah. They're athletes. They're talented. They're not good at football. UCLA, they're not even talented. Yeah, I I think I agree with you. Now, the issue is, like, I've heard somebody talking the other day about uh, uh, recruiting rankings and how the players that are at UCLA actually have higher recruiting rankings than any of the classes that Chip Kelly had at Oregon. I don't know that. It, the difference to me, though, is that the players that were recruited to Oregon fit a scheme, and the players at UCLA are just a hodgepodge, right? Like, I don't Correct. think they necessarily go together. Like, they might have talent and whatnot, but if it doesn't fit what you're trying to do, I don't know how successful you can be. Are we learning that coaches that sit out of football for a couple of years – Maybe there was a reason they set out of football, and you can't just jump back in and get into it and just take over a school and be great again. I think that – well, it, it depends on the coach, right? Um, I don't, I'm just saying I wonder if we can throw a blanket statement on. If a guy sits out for two, three years, he, he's probably not the guy you want to hire to take over a major program. You know, I, yeah, if he sits out two, three years, yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, but I mean, at the same time, Rich Rodriguez, uh, when he went to Arizona, started out three and O Jim Mora, when he went into UCLA, he started out three and O, I believe, you know, and those were guys that, that had sat out for a little while, uh, and, but, and those, but they never had and those things success. happen in six, seven years ago. Yeah. I mean, it's, those things are the game few is so and far between today as it was six years ago. We understand that, right? You, uh, yes, you are correct on that. You are correct. Let's uh, let's jump off of that. Other than Ohio State, the Big Ten was absolute garbage this weekend. Uh, were you able to see any of the uh, the stuff while you were up in Boston? Like, did, uh, well, did you I see follow, any of the crazy I scores? I was yes, I was following all the scores constantly. That's uh, what did you think about BYU twenty four, Wisconsin twenty one? I'm I'm actually not going to kill Wisconsin. Okay, they're not as good as I thought they were. That's fine. I don't think they're a dead team. I think this BYU team is way better than you or I thought before the season started. And, and I, yeah. I think they're way better. A, they play an insane schedule. And they showed up to play. Yeah, they really did. They, they out Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Exactly. Right? So the, uh, the deal here, like Wisconsin beat themselves, which is what they normally do to other teams. Um, they had a turnover that was converted into a touchdown. And they missed a field goal. And BYU just, you know, held the rope, did what they were supposed to do, didn't turn the ball over. I mean, it was it, it was the perfect game plan to be able to sneak out of there with a win, uh, especially in a, uh, like, a letdown look-ahead spot when Wisconsin's got Iowa coming up this weekend. So I think they thought they might just be able to sleepwalk through the game like they have with New Mexico and who are Sisters of the Poor that they played in the first week. Uh, 
But obviously that was not the case. So BYU came to play, and, and props to them. Uh, Rutgers went to Kansas, got beat 55-14. Yeah, we don't expect anything out of them. For people to throw them into this, oh, the Big Ten look bad, Rutgers is always bad. I don't think it was so much that, like, they lost the game. I think it's that they got beat 55-14. to 14. They gave up 400 rushing yards to Kansas. But like, that garbage. is insane. What do we expect from garbage? Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have any kind of expectations, really. Uh, Temple beat Maryland 35-14. to 14. Temple was 0-2 coming into this game. They had lost to Villanova and Buffalo, and they did not give up a single offensive score to Maryland. Maryland had a defensive score and a special team score. And that I, yeah, one surprised me. I can't me. figure that one out. That one did shock me. Uh, that that might have been the beginning of the end of uh, – For Matt Canada? Know, yeah, that Canada's <laughs> – I thought maybe Canada was going to go on a run there and uh, parlay this into a head coaching job somewhere. May, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. not. Maybe not. Troy 24, <laughs> Nebraska 19. Uh, I told you last week, without Adrian Martinez – this Nebraska team would be lucky to win three, four ball games. Um, look, the the branch kid is okay, uh, but this is still a Troy team that got beat at home by thirty something by Boise State. You know, this Nebraska you would think should have been able to get their first win here, and Neil Brown just continues to uh, to hype up his own his own resume here. He gets uh, a good win. This weekend was a great weekend for two guys that I'm in the tank with. Neil Brown, Bill, Bill Clark. Yeah, Bill Clark whooped me. They started off bad. They let me down a couple of times. I got off of them, but I never go against them. Never. Now, you, they got you're the right. right and, uh, and they both look great. That's uh, me having Tulane minus four last week. I, I thought about it the day of. I said, what am I doing? Like, what? Bet Why would I Bill do Clark. that? It's not a smart move. It's not a smart move. South Very Florida good. beat Illinois twenty-five to nineteen. Missouri beat uh, Purdue forty to thirty-seven in just a ridiculous back and forth game. Purdue had five hundred seventy-two yards passing and still lost. And Purdue is now zero and three on the season, so not good. And then Akron beats Northwestern thirty-nine to thirty-four. That just that that that's the one. Yeah. Of all of these because I have expectations of Northwestern being good. I just do. Yeah. I mean, it's it, here's the deal. Northwestern was up 21-3 to three at the half, and Akron ended the game with 15 penalties for 140 yards, and Akron still won the game. Yeah, like Northwestern threw pick sixes, right? Well, it was two pick sixes and a fumble return for a touchdown. Okay, yeah, three, three turnovers for a score. That's, yeah. That's insane. I, I, it's – well, and at, at some point, you still had to give up 18 points to Akron – so, like, I don't know. It's, it, it never made any sense to me. I don't know Nebraska what's going on up there. Nebraska might the one that's glad that uh, Akron took that money and ran. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, after, uh, after that, I mean, absolutely. Uh, we'll move on to the Pac-12. Pac-12 wasn't great either. Uh, let's see. Fresno State, of course, we, uh, we talked about them knocking out UCLA. Nevada beats Oregon State 30, uh, 37-35. Nevada was actually favored by three and a half. But Oregon State missed the field goal on the last play of the game uh, from 33 yards out. So that, that was not good. San Diego State beats Arizona State. Did you see any of this one by chance? No, nope, I watched no Pac-12 after dark. So, so you didn't read any recaps or anything like that? You want me to tell not you what happened? Pac-12, yeah. Okay, so Arizona State goes down 28 to, 20, or 28 to 14 to San Diego State with like four minutes left, right? And Arizona State comes down the field, scores a touchdown with like a minute and 40 seconds left to make it 28 to 21. San Diego State gets the onside kick and runs the football rather than trying to take a knee. They fumble the ball and give it back to Arizona State. With like 14 seconds left in the game, Manny Wilkins throws a like a 40-something yard pass down to the two-yard line. And on the play, like they were not going to review it as a catch or, or anything like that. They reviewed it because they called targeting on one of the guys from San Diego State. So they actually review the tape and determine that the guy did not catch the football. 
Like, they weren't going to review it for a catch. They only reviewed it for, uh, for targeting. And then they determined that it was, like, it was targeting, but he didn't catch the ball. So rather than having a first and 10 at the uh, two-yard line, or first and goal at the two-yard line, they've got first and 10 from the 35. So with like 14 seconds left, so they threw a couple of Hail Marys. It, you know, it, it, was, it was a weird way for the game to end. So, so San Diego State had a game-winning... Um, targeting? Yeah, a game-winning targeting call. <laughs> it was... It was definitely interesting. Uh, on the other side of it, the Pac-12, uh, we talked about this a little bit. Texas 37, USC 14. Uh, check out this stat line. USC had 16 rushes for negative five yards. Wow. Was that insane? Yeah. I and mean, it just That's a lot like that sense. Florida State stat line I gave you the other day from Va Tech game back in the first game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Uh, we talked, uh, you know, we'll move that into the Big 12 stuff. Oklahoma State 44, Boise State 21. Don't bet against look, the bullet. Hey, look, Jim Knowles at Oklahoma State, uh, he might be able to bring Gundy his first playoff appearance. Like, I, I think that he is a fantastic defensive coordinator. They've already got 32 tackles for loss this season in three games, and they've already got 16 sacks. They had seven sacks against um, uh, against Boise State. So I, this game was never in doubt. I, I know I know you just can't – all these people in the world, around the country are just chalking up Ohio, uh, Oklahoma as to, to winning the Pac-12 and getting a playoff spot and just rolling through. I mean, be, be real careful about walking over TCU and, and, uh, and, and Oklahoma State. Yeah. Oh, Oklahoma just, State just, looks really good right now. No, you can't just chalk up W's there now. Nope, you are correct. Uh, let's talk about Texas Tech and Houston. Bar Does this bar. game matter? Golly, there was no defense. No. There what was over 1,300 yards like of offense. The, like, like the number one draft pick overall, Houston defensive lineman. Like, like this guy can't get any. Ed stuff. Oliver. Well, yeah, it, he's a stud. Yeah, he's a stud. But, like, if you're the only one – you know, there's not a whole lot that you can do. Oh, well, that's that's not true. I've, we've watched a lot of only ones for small schools before, and they still wreck quarterbacks. Now, maybe scheming is just better today than it was a couple of years ago, and it's easier for him to, you know, them to get the ball off a lot faster. But he got well, that no and he got double teamed a lot. Right, like when a the best ton, double and triple team. You're supposed to be able to get through double teams. If you're the number one overall draft pick, double teams from Texas Tech should not stop you. No, you you're right about that. Miles you're right about Garrett, that. Double, double team by SEC guys still got through. Still got through. Yeah, Khalil Mack at Buffalo. I mean, he he was getting That's double right. triple team. One one guy on a small school still wreaked havoc. You got that right. You got that right. Um, let's move on. Uh, we'll end with a couple of different things. Uh, Alabama and and Georgia. We're gonna talk about look. the TCU Oklahoma or Ohio State game. Where did I have that on this? Oh yeah, yeah, I completely. <laughs> I completely skipped over it. The rest of the Big Ten was so bad, I was just like, ah, get it out of here. Uh, yeah, no. Big 12. Uh, the TCU, TCU could have won this game. Great. They absolutely great game. could have won this game. It was, it was like a great it, game. Had they not turned the ball over three times, yeah. I think they win. The, the last 15, 20 minutes of that game ended it for them. I mean, it, it, and it's like, you know, real time, not really clock time. Like the, the last half of the fourth quarter, they just – they began to make mistakes that you can't make against Ohio State. We, we talk about don't bet against these big monster teams. Man, they're, they're not all unbeatable. Maybe Alabama and Georgia are, but Clemson, Clemson's looked beatable. They don't scare me, you know, the way Alabama and Georgia do. Ohio State has now looked beatable. Oklahoma looked beatable. Yeah. Uh, tell me, Ohio now, State. they all got wins. They're all undefeated. But, but they've played three quality opponents, each one of those schools, and all three of them, they don't scare me. And tell me this. Uh, I thought Ohio State's defense under Greg Schiano was supposed to be, you know, pretty incredible. They've given up over 500 yards to Oregon State and TCU. Now, they won both games, yeah. but 
I mean, that's a lot of yardage, a lot of points to be given up if, if you're going to be a, a championship team, right? I don't, I don't know the talent level that they have. I mean, I'm sure they've got five and four stars all over the place. The only guy on defense that any of the TV guys ever talk about is Watt. That's it. That's it. Like, like it's like he's the only guy out there. So I can't even speak intelligently. I watch. You mean you mean second. Bosa? But Bosa, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, Nick Bosa. <laughs> that's it. You that's still thinking of JJ Watt? Yeah. Well, Watt's little brother. No, they're all in the NFL now. Yeah. Yes, they're all out. No, yeah. It's a uh, it's Bosa's little brother. He was the only guy they talked about. I listened to the whole game, heard everything about it, and and absolutely felt like. They don't talk about any of these guys at all. And and they gave up a lot of yards, but they still made some plays. They made some big plays, and, and they just didn't get a lot of credit from the TV crews. That, that's shame on Herbie and those guys, man. They got to do a better job of kind of informing people about who these kids are. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, let's close out with, uh, with a couple of notes. Uh, Boston College looks like they could uh, possibly win the ACC. Uh, they, they look that talented. I don't talented. know if they can win it, but they're going to be in that. There's a – there's three horses in the ACC right now. Yeah, they'll be involved. They're gonna, yeah, they're going to they're gonna have something to say about it. Uh, North Texas beat Arkansas 44-17. to 17. Did you see the fake punt? Okay, I did, and I actually have – Or not I fake punt, fake a, punt return. I get it. I have a little bit of a problem with this play, okay? In today's world, with all the targeting and all this other stuff, I know the kid never called for it. But if he's just standing still – and that player comes up and lays him out. There is no doubt in my mind they throw an un- unnecessary roughness flag. That guy gets ejected from the game. And they say, well, the player gave himself up. Because I've heard I've heard them call somebody down for, quote, unquote, giving himself up, even though he didn't give a signal. So Arkansas got beat. They got beat hands down every inch of the field they got beat on. That play should have absolutely – that kid should have been called down by just dropping his arms and standing still and walking, like, kind of walking away. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. I because do agree with if, that. Because if next, week, next week somebody else is going to try that and a defensive player is going and to – And they're going to get killed. <laughs> and, and what's going to happen is that defensive player is going to get ejected from the game, that special teams player, going to be ejected. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty, and they're going to say – well, he gave himself up. Oh, the yeah. officials mess that up. They absolutely, as soon as the guy drops his arms and starts walking at a real slow pace, the official needs to blow his whistle and say, play's dead. You, you've yeah. given yourself up. Yeah, that's okay. So it's somebody on Facebook jumped in. NCAA is looking into making that play yeah. illegal now. Uh, they, as they, they, they have to because of safety. They, the, A, because the fair catches today, so many times you're running, you're getting blocked. So you can't necessarily keep your eye on the guy you're attacking because you're being blocked. And after you get off your block, do you know if that guy made the fair catch signal or not? Because you can't watch him the whole time. You're messing with the gunner. You know? Yeah. No, you're you're 100 percent right about that. It, it's, it's absolutely right. safe. It didn't cost Arkansas the game. Arkansas looked like crap. They got trashed. They should be getting beat. They should be getting all the criticism they're getting. I thought Morris would do a much better job than he's doing there, but. That that play that play shouldn't be on all the highlight reels, and we shouldn't all be laughing at Arkansas for it. I just disagree with that. No, Arkansas, we need to be laughing at because they threw six interceptions. Um, but let's close out with these two stats. I got two stats for you, okay? Okay. First off, we're going to start with Tua on third downs this year. Have you heard this stat yet? No, no because I haven't paid attention to a single Alabama game yet. On third downs, Tua Tonga-Vailoa is 12 of 12 for 297 yards and six touchdowns. Is that into – oh, and, and he's also run for three other first downs on third down. Um, and then we'll close with this one. Give it a little hometown love. You ready? All right. Memphis running back Daryl Henderson is leading the country in rushing. 36 carries for 521 yards and six touchdowns, 173.67 yards per game, 14.47 yards every time he touches the ball. We sure as hell didn't do it against a Navy game. No, he had like 7.8 yards per carry in in Navy, uh, but they they didn't give him the ball. I think he touched it like 12 times. 
whatever happened didn't help me at all. <laughs>